This is the one minute orthopedic screening exam. I have Edie here to help me. So the first thing that we're gonna do is watch her move and watch her gait analysis. And a great way to do that is actually watching her move into the exam room from the waiting room, from the lobby. So we'll watch Edie move in. And then once she's in the exam room, looking for here are a number of things. We're looking at her back, so the top line. And I can tell that she has um, just a tiny bit of a sway back here, and we call that lordosis. The opposite would be kyphosis, where it's a little bit hunched. And you can imagine those dogs that are, have some degree of back pain and they're kind of tucked up here. So I'm looking for her posture in terms of how her top line looks. Is her pelvis tucked under um, what I would call a caudal pelvic tilt, which she does not have substantially right now. Also looking for things like shifting weight from one leg to the other, from the front limbs to the back limbs. Um, does she stand with her legs externally rotated? anything that is abnormal in terms of her posture. After observing posture, we're gonna look at transitions, and transitions are how she moves um, through her sitting and standing. So, here. She's just gonna offer it up for us. So her down, so she moved very nicely and easily through a down. She's able to hold that nice symmetric sphinx position. And let's see when she stands up. Good, so she moves straight from a down to a standing position, which is great. Some dogs that have weak hind limbs, especially arthritis in their hips, they will move from down, <laughs> down. <clears throat> that's a very nice play bow, down. So that's actually something that I'm looking for there. Some dogs, while they're moving and holding that nice sphinx position, they'll move to a down and immediately shift their hips to one side. And this is why it's nice to repeat it a few times. But if we're doing just a one minute screen, we'll have the dogs lay down and then stand back up. But if they move from a down to a sit first and then a stand, that suggests to me that there may be some pelvic limb weakness. So, Edie, here. Good, but she's able to move just kind of propping herself up with her back legs. So that was the down, but I also wanna see how she sits. Sit, good. <laughs> so Edie likes to show us her tricks, but I just wanna see how she sits. What I'm looking for here again is symmetry, especially in the pelvic limbs. Um, does she fully flex her stifles and her tarsi? If I observe her, she's, you know, she's very straight through the front limbs when she's standing. And as a Great Dane, we know they have um, very long feet in the front. So just to notice the symmetry in her front limbs, but particularly looking at the back legs when she's sitting. And then I want to see how she moves from a sitting to a stand. So is she using both limbs equally to move through that transition? So that was excellent. The next thing we're going to do is... This is kind of more of the hands-on palpation. And for a screening exam, really what I'm doing is looking for muscle symmetry. And I can incorporate this into my general physical exam. So often, starting at the front, we can look at mucous membrane color, hydration, check out her teeth. I can't help myself, but I'm always going to palpate for lymph nodes. You can take a look in her ears. So you're doing your general physical exam cranial nerves, looking for muscle palpation, um, muscle symmetry up in the head. So we know some of our older dogs with um, geriatric onset laryngeal paralysis and polyneuropathy will have atrophy in their temporal muscles. Coming down to the neck, so I'm going to palpate along the cervical spine. Again, palpating for any areas of discomfort, any trigger points, and again, particularly muscle symmetry. Running my hands down her shoulders, and I can feel the spine of the scapula and feeling, does one side feel equal to the other? Good girl, good girl. Coming over the front of her shoulders, you can gently palpate the biceps, or the region of the biceps tendon. Come internally, palpate the pectoral muscles. Coming down her arms and now at the elbows. You're so good. At her elbows, I'm feeling for any periarticular fibrosis, particularly on the medial aspect of the elbow. Excellent, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So palpating down the elbows, and palpating again for symmetry, for any effusion on the lateral aspect, periarticular fibrosis on the medial aspect. Down at the carpi, again, feeling for any effusion in the joints. Feel the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon. And then looking at the digits and seeing if she's offloading any particular direction. Now I'm coming along her spine, palpating the paraspinal muscles, looking for any twitching or spasms that she may have in her latissimus, which are the big muscles that come across the thorax here, 
or along the paraspinal muscles in her lower back. You can also palpate along the spine itself, looking for any discomfort there. We get to the pelvic limbs, and again, all about muscle symmetry. So we're feeling, we're palpating her thighs for any um, subjective muscle atrophy, palpating the hamstrings, quadriceps, also getting in here, making sure that you feel the femoral pulses, and then down along the stifles. And this is hugely important, palpating for effusion in the stifle. So effusion in the stifle joint is a very early sign of a cruciate ligament disease. And so that's most easily palpated when they're standing up. So I'm gonna palpate here along the patellar tendon and then feeling for periarticular fibrosis or medial buttress at the medial aspect of the stifle. After palpating the stifles, I'm gonna run my hands down the distal limb and palpating the tarsus. So again, feeling for any periarticular fibrosis, any asymmetry between one tarsi joint and the other. And then also feeling the Achilles tendon. Again, feeling for symmetry, any swelling or thickening at the insertion of the Achilles to the calcaneus. And then we finish up with the strength test, which is where I'm picking up one, of her, one leg at a time and comparing how well she lets me pick up one side compared to the other. So I'll put one hand underneath her belly gently lift up this limb, see how, how easy she was, I'll, I'll see how easy it was to pick up the leg, how reluctant she was to let me have it, and then how she stands on the other side. Okay, so she starts to compensate pretty quickly. Now let's see how it is on the other side. So she, you know, we know most dogs should be able to stand on three legs, but that's pretty good. We'll try that just one more time. So I'd say that was pretty equal. She gave me each leg um, pretty equally in terms of um, some degree of reluctance to want, want to let me pick them up. And we'll do the same thing in the front. When you're lifting up the legs for a, a strength test, if you hold right underneath their body, they may put weight through your hand. So I generally hold out in front. And this one. So with that, it was pretty equal in terms of her letting me pick up each leg. So strength-wise, I don't detect any asymmetry between one side or the other um, or front to back. So that's the should be about a one-minute screening um, orthopedic exam that you can incorporate into your general physical exam.